I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaya Diamond. What's up, people? How you doing? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we'll be right back. Don't you go anywhere. You know when I do that, we have an amazing show for you. An amazing show is just the tip of the iceberg, okay? Because we have a, okay, so let me just go back. This gentleman here has done music that I just, I, I can't even imagine having him on my show, just put it that way. Because I have listened to him and his music and his name has been said so many times in my household. So, I'm just going to introduce him, Mr. Keith Washington. Welcome to the show, sir. Hey, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for being on the show. Okay, so tell me, tell me, tell me, how did you get started? Everybody has an amazing story. What's yours? I thought you was about to say, everybody has an amazing story about me, but no. Um, <laughs> well, you know, I'm from Detroit, Michigan, you know, and man from Detroit, you know, you know, there's nothing but that was very gaudy, you know, Motown and everybody in the city of Detroit, you know, have some type of talent when it comes to music. And I come from a musical background. You know, my uncle sings, my mother was a singer, my aunts and uncles are, and so on and so forth. So um, being from Detroit, being from a family of six, you know, three brothers and sisters, bills had to be paid. So somehow my sister discovered that I had talent <laughs> and I was six years old. Oh. And she discovered I can sing and told the family. And from that position there, my aunt that was into the entertainment business and so on and so forth, she would take me around at different um, different um, nightclubs and so on and so forth. And, you know, start developing things. I started making money. I started helping my mother pay these high bills for six kids, you know? Wow. So that's what I basically started when I was six years old. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is such a unique story. And it's so it's so like a sister to push you out there. You can say go. <laughs> and you let me tell you, she found me. I was in a room. I was in a room, my brother and I, and at the time I really was crazy about Batman when I was little. So I used to draw, you know. And at the time of drawing in the other room, she had like a James Brown song. And I think it was like, I don't know what James Brown song. And I was singing as I was drawing, and she was in the doorway. And she oh, saw me, she said, wait a minute. I, I, I looked at her and she looked at me because I thought she was going to say, don't be singing, I'm listening to Muno. But she thought she heard some talent. And uh, she asked me to do it again and told me if I didn't do it in front of my mother, when my mother go, go to work, she was going to you know, pay me a visit, you know? <laughs> so um, I, when my mother came home, you know, um, she um, asked me to sing, I sing in front of my mother. And of course my mother would have me sing at a girlfriend's house and so on and so forth. And, I started opening up for people like um, um, Brenda Russell. I started opening mm. up at a place called the 20 Grand in Detroit, Michigan. That, all this was happening while I was six and seven years old. Oh so actually, God. I, I, I kind of elevated to a whole different level from a bedroom to a stage, you know? Yeah. At six and seven. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think anybody's ever told me that, that they mm -hmm. were elevated at that such a young age. So this is pretty much all you've been doing all of your life? Yeah, I mean, you know, music was my life. I mean, being from a musical background, like I mentioned only my uncles and my aunts. So that's why I was very comfortable in entering the stage and not shy. Now understand, when I first started, it was my brother and I. We were called the two aces, right? Mm -hmm. And my brother Mark, which was my younger brother, he was not a racehorse. Not in music. He was like, I'm not doing this no more. You can whip me, you can do whatever. I'm not going up there. He was more shy than I. Uh -huh. So he, he quit the group and I was by myself. So, my, you know, I just kept it going. And I mean, it was cool, you know, it was cool. But I've done um, from that point on, I, I, you know, I used to be a martial artist. You know, I trained a lot, you know, but music was my life, basically. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. And when, okay, so from six years old, you started singing for everybody. Mm -hmm. You started opening up for uh, just um, amazing people. Mm -hmm. When did you notice and when did you have your first hit that you noticed that, wait a minute, everybody's really like, this is a life for me? My first hit was, um, my first hit was not even on me. My first hit was on Freddie Jackson. And it was mm. called Hey Lover. 
the song Hey Lover. Yeah, and I wrote that. Um, that was my first hit and and my first paycheck. Mm -hmm. I mean, outside the other things that I've done, like you know, I, I've um, I've done a Seven Up jingle with the emotions, you know, when I was mm -hmm. younger. But I was like in my twenties, you know. But mm -hmm. as far as making money in the business, was from Freddie Jackson, you know. Mm -hmm. And I went on the right records for different people, but on my own, mm -hmm. um, it was it was like my first. Well, my first record that I sung actually on was was with George Clinton. Parliament Funkadelic. Uh -huh. It was by the way of the drums. So, wow. yeah, man. You know, I mean, I've done all the stuff coming up. I've done a show it's called Star Search. I've done, you know, mm -hmm. coming up all those things. But my first paycheck was with George Clinton, and, and my first live performance on a record, if I can remember, was with George Clinton. Wow. And then I went on and sang background for Stevie Wonder, you know, sessions a bit out. But yeah. Wow. I mean, did you ever, when you were six years old, okay, I know that, you know, but when you got a little bit older, when you were a little bit older and, and kind of established in it, did you ever, ever think that your life would start so young and go so far? Well, I knew I liked singing. And like I said, my neighborhood, there was doo-wop groups. And when I was about 17, I joined the doo-wop group that my, my uncle was like, y'all should check Keith out, you know? Mm -hmm. And they knew I was talented. You know, but and it was older than I. And I wind up getting in a group with these guys, and we wind up driving to Philly International to see if we can get a deal with Gamlin and Huff. We had the opportunity to meet with one of them, I think it was Gant Kenny. It was Leon, it was one of those guys. And they liked the group, but they kept saying, Who's this guy singing here? And they, mm -hmm. you know, I'm the youngest guy with the biggest mouth. So they was like, Well, that's Keith. And it was like, You guys are very talented. You are very talented, you know. And um, they said, it's obvious that Teddy is one of your mentors because you have similarity with Teddy Pendergrass out mm -hmm. among yourself. I was like, yeah. So that didn't work out. You know, it was already a Teddy. Mm -hmm. But so we, we just, the group didn't get signed. So another deal came and I realized, I, I, I realized I'm, a, I'm a free spirit person when it comes to music. I just wanted to do me. So I left the group and I moved to Beverly Hills, that is. So I moved to <laughs> California and um, pursued my career. Mm -hmm. You know, I love stories like this because yeah. people don't believe they can make it. You know, they don't they believe that their life is too hard or or, you know, they are just not good enough. But that's just not the case. A lot of times, you know, we get propelled into things and we just work hard. I mean, what was it like for you? Was it was life on the road hard for you or was it easy or was it kind of me? It was kind of the medium. Well, like I said, I was um, I was exposed to that too. When mm -hmm. I was around 17, 18 years old being in Detroit, there's a group called the Dramatics mm -hmm. that went to high school with my family. And um, I went to stay with my aunt and they stayed like right down the street from one of my aunts. And I started going on tour with them. So they started taking me on tour as part of the band. But mm -hmm. what they would do is feature me coming in somewhere in the middle of the show. They'd bring me from the back to sing lead. Oh, and wow. John Banks and LJ would tell the world that you look out for him, he's coming up. So I was already accustomed being young singing on stage. I was very accustomed, I was very already accustomed to that. And being older, you know, I was ready. I was I was seasoned for this. And I, I mean, I, I, I was never like, when it's gonna happen. I knew it was gonna happen. Like I tell people all the time, you know, you have to believe in yourself, you know? Denzel always mm -hmm. say, a dream and a goal. You know, what well, well, is a dream without a goal? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can, you can, you always got to, Believe in yourself, but mm -hmm. you know, move forward and follow your dreams and believe in yourself. I mean, I'm telling you, there, there, in anything we do in life, there's going to be a downfall. I don't understand B plans. I never had one. People say, well, yeah. you know, so you can fall back on something. No, I fall forward. I fall yeah. forward. So yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in, and I, I don't knock people that do have a B plan. Some people are fortunate enough to be able to have a background, a family with a silver spoon in their mouths. Well, you know, you're going out there because you can always go to college to be a doctor. You know, but see, a, lot of, a lot of kids are not fortunate enough. You have to right. graduate. So I was one of those less fortunate, but yet fortunate. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I just believe in what I, you know, I, I carried my dream and I moved to L.A. And I slept on buses and, you know, mm -hmm. getting off at bus stops at the end of bus. People knew me. I mean, I've done it all. But I'm going to wow. tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. 
I never wow. ever gave up. I walked that mile and, and, and everything that happened in my life with a smile on my face because I knew mm -hmm. that this was part of my journey. Wow. You know? That is yeah. amazing. And, and and thank you for never You're giving welcome. up because you have brought the world such amazing music and now you're doing something new. So tell me about upcoming music. I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay. So yeah, we, um, we're back. We're back, you know, I'm um, recording some things. I mean, it's like they say out of sight, out of mind, but you know, I never, I may have been out of range a little bit, but you know, I always kept doing what I was doing. So we now, I mean, you know, I've, I've had so many tragedies in my life. I mean, you know, my mother being demise, you know what I mean? Um, you know, that, that was a real tough one on me and kind of, I, I, I wind up, been doing radio in Detroit. I was signed to radio, you know, I did radio, midday radio. I mean, midnight from seven to midnight um, as an air, on per air personality person. Um, I moved back to Detroit, you know, but um, so I was doing a lot of other things, man. But at the end of the day, you know, you find yourself again. And mm -hmm. when you find yourself again, or you miss something so much, you know, it's like a fighter. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm retiring. But in his blood, Michael Jordan, I'm retiring from basketball, but he knew he was coming back because it's in his blood. Me, right. it was like after all the things that I'd been through in my life, I knew there was another there was another move to be made, and whatever mm -hmm. I was going through was preparing me for the move that's going to be made, which is a new a new record that we were doing. You know what I mean? It was I'm helping strengthen my character and helping me, you know, um, um, build other things to talk about in my life, you know, and give me the mm -hmm. passion. And the world of mm -hmm. one just continue doing it to help others. And that's my whole focus, to do what I can do to extend my love to my family and those that I know that could use the opportunity or use something to help them get ahead. So we're back in the studio and we're recording some beautiful music. Yes, people always ask me, um, if you and Shantae, are you guys doing another duet? Mm -hmm. And I tell them yes, because she and I have often talked about it, yet we still tour together sometimes. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. So the new record is well worth the wait. And I'm sure, I am so sure it is. Wow. You know, Mr. Washington, you have been a staple since, you know, in, in people's lives since, since a very young age. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you. I thank you for having me, man. You know, I also, you know, I'm doing a web series that I can't talk about right now. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, I used to do General Hospital and I did an episode on Martin. I can't walk down the street with somebody saying, aren't you going on Martin Lawrence? You know, because I did an episode on Martin and right. did General right. Hospital. So at those times, I really didn't have the acting bug. I just knew, my manager knew people and people were trying to encourage me to acting, for acting. So I did, you know, the Marvin Gaye story. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, there's a lot of things that's happening in my life that I'm just thanking God that I have the opportunity. And you're probably a dumpster right now because it's the trash guy. <laughs> it's okay. It's I'm what day is it? It's Tuesday. It's trash day. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I was out here working out. Hey guys. <laughs> It's okay. It's oh, good. It's good. I was, it's good. I, was, you know, I got. I got. I have a setup in my garage because I work out a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Well, as much as I can. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and do this outside. And forgetting that there was trash day today, and I see the truck <laughs> coming. I'm like, oh shit! He's coming down this way. Oh, to make all the noise in the world. He's gone now, but. That's I am okay. so sorry about that. Well, at least we know that you I love remember. you so much, I forgot to take my trash out. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Every Tuesday. Whew. It's yeah. all right. It's okay. Because I feel privileged to even have a little bit of your life on camera with me. And, and it's it's a pleasure to be in the same frame as you. I want to thank you again so very much for being on the show. And I'm sorry you forgot your trash. I sure did, man. You know, I want to give a big shout out to y'all too. Thank you for your love and support. And there's good music and new music coming from me very shortly. And also, if you don't mind, can I plug my thing in, in Vegas if you don't mind? You know what? Go right ahead. If you're not doing it on Labor Day weekend, September 5th, myself and Angie Stone 
and the foursome Ds are performing in Las Vegas. Go to my web page, I mean, my um, face page and check it out. You see the flyer, you know, so 5th of September in Las Vegas. Also, I'm gonna give a big shout out to my man, Joe Mason for um, his love and support. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. People, thank y'all for messing up my interview. Oh my gosh. So September 5th is okay. September 5th in Las Vegas. You guys, all you have to do is go ahead and go to facebook.com forward slash Keith Washington Soul. Keith Washington Soul oh, on nice Facebook. Person. Make sure you see the, the blue check mark. Thank you. The Thank verified you. so that you know it's really him. And we will actually go ahead and have all that information in the description box that links you straight to him so that there will be no uh, mistake in that that is the correct page. Thank, Thank you. you again so much for taking time out of your workout because I know I have my gym in my garage too. <laughs> yeah, but you're better than me. I know you're already, women, y'all just on some next level stuff when it comes to responsibility. <laughs> yeah, I no, I already did. I already shot. did all that. <laughs> I should have been set it out. Look at me. Uh, I'm That's so okay. And, and actually, you know what? I've, I've forgotten a lot of times, so don't worry about it. <laughs> it's crazy, right? It's crazy. It's okay. It's all right. We, You know what? New music coming out in, in Las mm -hmm. Vegas in September. I, I know that, you know, it is what it is. The girls is will get taken out next the, week. What's the hotel that's the pyramid? That's where we at. The hotel that's shaped like the, the hotel pyramid. is, you know what? I don't know, but I will definitely find out and put it in the description. So I that way people you. can know. Yes, definitely. Definitely. The hotel mm -hmm. with the pyramid, guys. Don't forget that right. because I've, I've never been to Vegas. The Lexoil. The Lexoil. Okay, the Lexoil Hotel. We. Okay, there we go. There we go. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Washington, for being on the show. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And no problem. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. And don't forget, if you're in Vegas or if you're heading out to Vegas, September 5th uh, in Las Vegas at the, he said it before, what Love was so it? Well. An all white concert too, so you must wear white. All white, all white. So don't be eating like, you know, fries and, and, and ketchup and stuff. It doesn't go with white. Okay, I'm just gonna no, say. No, no, that's, that's an ugly look. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> All right, guys, until next time, don't forget to dare to be different. And Mr. Washington, again, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. And please keep that music coming. We love you over here, okay? We'll be back. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. I did to be different. I did to be different. I did.